Hello everyone and welcome. Today I have a very special video for you. Um, you might remember in my last video I reviewed and unboxed the EXUS PlayStation 2 to USB converter or adapter and this very nice device over here actually allows you to connect two PlayStation 2 rumble pad two game pads on your PC via USB uh, connector. So basically you can plug in one gamepad over here and another one over here and it will work flawlessly with uh, emulators on your PC or with other games. Just have in mind that for other games you might want to consider using a third party software like Joy2Key or even Xpeder but with emulators it works just fine. I played um, EPXX1 on it or e uh, PCX2 and it works just fine even with rumble features and it's a great device to have. Basically you can use your PlayStation 2 gamepad on your PC and play your games and I just love it. I'm just a big fan of uh, the PlayStation 2 gamepad and if you are as well make sure to get this, it's very cheap on eBay like um, 5 euros I believe and if you're interested in getting this check out my review on it, I will put a link in the description and yeah, highly recommend it, very good value for the price today however I have another great great converter this one over here is the it's called 3-in-1 converter and basically what this little converter box over here does is it will allow you to connect your PlayStation 2 gamepad on your Nintendo GameCube, Nintendo 64 or if you have an older um, original Nintendo Wii 001 model that one has an integrated GameCube emulator I believe and you can connect it you have your four ports over here and back here you have two slots for uh, the memory card this is a very good value Wii uh, I highly recommend it you can even get it on um, eBay on the cheap and make damn sure it's 001 it's a model 001 because that one has the integrated GameCube feature so yeah here over here we have the original GameCube Platinum version and I even hooked up the Game Boy Advance player to it to test if this converter will actually translate um, the gamepad's input into the Game Boy Advance um, emulator or Game Boy Advance player, sorry my bad and actually it does, I will demonstrate later so yeah this over here I got it also fairly cheap I think it's made in China it says at the back of it same as the EXUS one but you know everything nowadays is cheaply made in China um, I'm actually quite impressed with it as it does the, it gets the job done it even looks like a small Xbox you know the original model from 2001 and I think this is a neat design choice look at it it even looks like a small Xbox console <laughs> pretty neat so what can you do with it basically here is the PlayStation 2 cord you can put it um, right down here connect it you can only connect one controller and here at the side you have two plugins for or I believe for the original Xbox uh, memory cards. I have a schematic at the back here and as you can see I will show you real quick um, so basically what you can do is this is the box over here you connect your PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 gamepad at the bottom right here as you can see and then at the side of the converter you can connect two Xbox memory cards as you can see right here and right here so yeah then further as you go you have three options to connect to your consoles 
mainly if you have if you use this one over here this plug over here this one will go into your GameCube or Nintendo 64 or uh, on your Nintendo Wii 001 model and it, do it does work, I tested it out myself, works beautifully then you have a second option um, to play with the gamepad on your original Xbox you know the one from 2001 with Halo and Ninja Gaiden Black you could, you could connect it with this plug over here so you could just put it into your Xbox and play with it and of course the last option is to play with your um, PlayStation 2 gamepad on your PC by using the USB cable but why would you want to do that when you have an adapter like this one over here which, which does the job excellently so yeah but yeah it's a pretty powerful device and as I mentioned PlayStation 2 gamepad goes here then you connect and on both sides a memory card from the Xbox from the original Xbox then you can plug it into your um, GameCube over here as you can see works flawlessly in port 1 or you can use it on your Nintendo 64 unfortunately I don't have a Nintendo 64 to show you or you plug it into your um, Nintendo Wii if you have the older model with the GameCube um, sockets you can plug it into there so yeah pretty nice device so and this is the main reason I got it to be able to play Game Boy Advance games with this gamepad and to play older uh, GameCube games like Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3 and even Zelda Ocarina of Time and uh, Majora's Mask works fantastic with this converter however the only uh, real issue I had with it and uh, this is I believe a uh, it's not the converters fault but I wish it didn't include it um, the problem is the triggers if you can see over here I have a GameCube original GameCube um, controller this is how it looks the original GameCube controller as you can see the triggers on the original GameCube controller were designed that you can actually squeeze them in like this see now this is how the GameCube controller just works it has this weird um, it has this weird thumb, uh, not thumbstick, how are they called? triggers, this weird triggers I don't know why they decided to do this but um, this is one of the main reasons I don't particularly like the GameCube gamepad so much because of these weird triggers it has a slight delay when you press them in and I hate it on, on the normal PlayStation however you don't have it, you just have a, a trigger, a normal trigger so what this converter actually does to your trigger it adds a slight delay on the trigger and um, it will get annoying I must say I got annoyed on it quite a bit especially in Resident Evil where you have to press uh, you know I'm used to just pressing the trigger and then you aim but here you have to squeeze it in with the delay and that that problem kinda got on my nerves um, also was apparent in playing some uh, Game Boy Advance games on the GameCube you know uh, games like Metroid Fusion where you aim diagonally up with this one it, I had the delay and it, it was kinda annoying but fortunately for that game you can um, in the inside the Game Boy Advance player you can actually um, put uh, those triggers on other on other buttons and then it's fine but it's still annoying I would love to have uh, responsive triggers in Game Boy Advance games like Metroid Fusion but oh well you can always just plug in your original um, GameCube controller and play with that one but 
as I mentioned, I hate the triggers on the GameCube, GameCube gamepad. I really don't like them. So yeah, guys, basically this is about it. It's a very powerful device, also uh, very cheap, I believe, uh, same as with the Yaxos uh, converter. Um, it's like five to eight euros. Um, try to find it on eBay because I think they are still around, pretty cheap to find. Um, highly recommend it if you are a fan of the um, PlayStation 2 gamepad like me. It will allow you to play awesome games. Also, oh yeah, I forgot to mention the trigger delay on the on this converter uh, was also a little bit annoying in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask because you can actually um, block attacks with your trigger and it's just so unresponsive because you have to squeeze it in, you know, like this will emulate the weird trigger from the GameCube controller on your PlayStation 2 controller and the PlayStation 2 controller was designed for fast trigger action, you know, and you can't just go with the weird with the weird trigger of the GameCube gamepad, but aside from that all buttons work flawlessly and of course even the rumble feature works fine I will demonstrate in a few um, I will connect um, uh, the original uh, Nintendo Wii with the GameCube on it with the GameCube converter on it and later on I will demonstrate uh, some Game Boy Advance gameplay on it so stay tuned okay so now here I have connected um, my Wii to my um, HD monitor and in case you're wondering how the hell did I uh, connect an old console like the Wii on my HD monitor I will show you in my next review because I'm using a converter from Ligavo that converts actually um, analog signal into HDMI signal and I'm able to show you crystal clear the quality here on my monitor. I decided to do it to record it externally because I could also show you uh, a capture of it which I will do in my next unboxing of the Ligavo HD converter but um, for this purpose I will just show you how it works with the gamepad and that it actually works. So here I have in my background the Wii menu. Uh, one thing I want to mention is um, you can't control the Wii menu with your gamepad at all unless you are uh, using the Wii remote because um, as you may know the Wii only functions with the remote uh, features of this one but of course you can plug in a classic controller into this one and then um, control your Wii with it but uh, once you are inside the GameCube emulator of it, you can use your gamepad with no with ease. So, uh, first thing things we want to do is take the PlayStation 2 gamepad over here and connect it to the converter down here. It only has one socket, so you can only connect one gamepad, but that's fine with me. You connect it down here, and then we take the other end this one over here and put it into the Wii. You can also put this one into your GameCube or your Nintendo 64. It works with the GameCube, with the Nintendo 64 and with the uh, Wii model 001. And then I will take the camera and connect this over here and then I will take it and down here I have hooked up my Nintendo Wii plug it into the first port so yeah let's see if I have a, a signal, I do as you can see the converter lights up uh, in a green light very nice, looks really like the original uh, Xbox and yeah as you can see on the PlayStation 2 gamepad, the analog light went on and you can't turn it off anymore. So basically the gamepad is good to go. Now, as for the Wii, we have to boot into the actually 
the uh, a GameCube game over here. I could start up the the GameCube. I think I have Resident Evil 3 inserted and show you, but I will show you the loader, the homebrew channel, and I will fire up Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. So once you are into the loader, the USB loader, and start it up, just load it, you can put this aside and it will work with the gamepad. There it is. And as you can see, my left analog works fine with the gamepad. There is no delay whatsoever. And you can even use the D-pad. Fairly impressive. Of course you can also plug in a standard GameCube gamepad, but I just love me some PlayStation 2 gamepad. So, let's load up Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, because that game, I can demonstrate that it runs fairly well. Go down here and start it up. very happy to be able to play Twin Snakes with the PlayStation 2 gamepad and I will demonstrate you let's just skip the intro so I highly recommend it I think Twin Snakes even has some weird button inputs. I think you have to press select and square or was it B on your There it is guys, press start. Works. D pad and analog works fine. Let's load the game. I played this yesterday quite a lot. And yes, guys, it did, does work fine with every game out there. I've tested Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, Majora's Mask. All works fine. See, you have to press Start and A button to go into the codec. Alright guys, and as you can see, I can, can control Snake with the D-pad and with the analog stick. And if I select the weapon, and the rumble works as well, like the SOCOM, and go into first person mode, it works beautiful. Yeah, and this game controls so well with the PlayStation 2 gamepad. It's, how can I put it, basically a reskinned version of uh, Metal Gear 1 with the graphics of uh, Metal Gear 2. So yeah, as you can see, and even the, the rumble feature works fairly well. So yeah guys, um, so far quite impressed. Now earlier in my video I um, told you that because of the nature of the GameCube gamepad's trigger over here, um, the trigger on the PlayStation 2 will be delayed as well and this can 
cause some problems for you if you are used to the fast trigger of the PlayStation 2 gamepad. And yeah, I thought, I think in in Majora's Mask I had quite a difficult time, but you will get used to it if you squeeze it slowly and don't use it fast you can activate it, but in games like uh, Majora's Mask where you, you put up your shield pretty fast I would love to have uh, a fast responsive trigger so that's like my only real issue with this converter now I would say let's hook up the GameCube over here and show you some um, Game Boy Advance gameplay with the controller. Okay guys and here I am back um, I have hooked up my um, GameCube over here uh, with the composite cables onto my capture card and connected the converter to the first um, slot over here and um, I put up some uh, Majora's Mask in case you're wondering it's on the collection in the disc over here and let's see how it plays with the uh, gamepad. Later on I will show you the Game Boy Player. So let's put the camera down and as you can see the analog stick works quite well and if you press the square it has no delay or whatsoever weirdly enough I think the d-pad functions as start and select but it works just fine with the with the d-pad as you can see also controls very smooth now the problem I have with Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time is of course the trigger delay uh, in Majora's Mask I think the right bumper is block and you you really have to to get a feel for it you know but eventually you will get used to it problem is you have to squeeze it slowly to activate because you can find yourself that you are pressing it too fast and it won't do anything and in fast battles this is kinda annoying as you can see but if you squeeze it you have to find out the momentum you can do it this is like the only problem I have with this converter it's the weird delay on the left trigger and same as with the with the right trigger same with the left trigger um, because this one centers the camera you have to be very slow about it you can't just press it fast you know that's a problem aside from that it's it's a beautiful game it still holds up pretty well and I even have to check out the Nintendo 3DS release of this fantastic game because they re-released it on the Nintendo 3DS and yeah, as you can see, I'm playing Zelda Majora's Mask with a PlayStation 2 gamepad with the thumbstick via the 3 to 1 converter hooked up to my GameCube down there. And now I will show you some Game Boy Advance player because this is like the only reason you actually own a GameCube, right? to play the Game Boy Advance games on your big monitor and it does work with this gamepad I will show you I have here Metroid Fusion this one is quite an awesome game for the Game Boy Advance and let's hook it up guys in case you're wondering how am I recording um, Trust me, the picture quality is much worse with you when you are used to HD because I hooked up composite um, cables via my Avermedia Dark Crystal and it's outputting in composite signal. Um, yeah, you, it's playable but it's very very blurry 
and it's not recommended I will show you a much better way to enjoy this game by playing it on your Nintendo Wii uh, but that one I will save for my next video where I unbox the Ligavo um, HDMI converter so yes guys um, now for the um, Nintendo um, Game Boy Advance player yes you can play there are two ways actually or actually there are three ways one there is a very expensive uh, Nintendo GameCube uh, Super Nintendo gamepad made by Hori that uh, you can put into your GameCube and play Game Boy Advance games there is also another very good cable this cable over here which actually allows you to connect your Game Boy Advance if you have a Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Advance ESP um, you can connect it back here like that see and then you can plug it into your GameCube and play Game Boy Advance games or I think even normal games let's try it out with the Game Boy Advance pretty neat Okay, let's see if it works. Well, it doesn't seem to work on the go. Maybe I have to fire it up. No, nope, but it doesn't seem to work, so you can't actually play. Um, or maybe I will just reset it. I'm curious if this will work. Nope, you can't. So you can't actually play GameCube games with this one. Or maybe it needs some configuration. But what you can do is... Let's unplug the Game Boy Advance. Like that. And now for the Game Boy Player, you will absolutely need this boot up disk. This is a PAL boot up disk for the for the Nintendo GameCube. Let's power it off. And in case you were wondering how the hell was I playing Majora's Mask on the GameCube, well it was actually released on a special disc called uh, the Collector's Edition and the Collector's Edition contains Majora's Mask and I believe even um, emulated versions of Zelda 1 and 2 so this is a very cool disc, I kinda like it, it's it's fun to have such classics on the GameCube, you know let's put it down here and this is the Game Boy Player disc a PAL region since I am here in um, in Germany and I got this disc from the United Kingdom all the way back I believe in 2005 let's put it in, you put it into your um, Game Boy into your uh, GameCube close it then you take the cartridge of the Game Boy Advance game you wanna play like Metroid Fusion over here put it into the Game Boy Player I will show you so just put in the uh, you have to absolutely have to put in the Game Boy Advance uh, disc Advance player disc over here close it and then down here this black brick over here you put in Metroid Fusion or your Game Boy Advance game so and you even have a eject button over here oh I dropped Metroid Fusion so you put it back in voila and let's see how it performs on the converter down here is the converter you just take it and connect it here in the first port like that let's power it on and see
There he is, guys. So, press start. And it does look blurry a lot. Okay, and let's see. So the D-pad works fairly well. No problem with the D-pad. Well, I kinda enjoy playing this game. Of course you could also play it on an emulator. But since I am a retro guy, I always like playing on original hardware, guys. This is the whole purpose I collect them and such, you know. So it works fairly well, as you can see. What I love about the PlayStation 2 gamepad is it has such a precise D-pad. And in a game like this, where you have to make very fast movements and precise d-pad movements you uh, a gamepad like this is much much appreciated of course you can always play it with your um, game to gamepad but I just love the button layout and, and I just love the d-pad on the PlayStation 2 it, it uh, plays very well now the one problem I also had with uh, Majora's Mask is in Metroid Fusion the right trigger activates the missiles and since I have a delay as you can see this is the one problem I have with with this game the shoulder buttons the triggers just won't react fast enough to activate the missiles and as you can see I it's it's not noticeable in this video, but trust me, it's not as fast as I would like to look. If I press it real fast, it won't even activate. So that's a problem. Especially if you're in a battle. But aside from that, you can... You can get used to it. I mean, it's just not as responsive as I would like it to be, you know. So there you go guys, playing Metroid Fusion with the PlayStation 2 gamepad on a original Nintendo GameCube using the Game Boy Advance player. And yeah of course the left bumper is the, not bumper sorry my bad, but left trigger is the vertical or diagonal aim. You also have to kind of squeeze it. It's not as responsive. But aside from that, it's pretty awesome. So, the second way, of course, you can play it is by using an original Game Boy Advance with this cord over here. And I believe it would work quite nice. Let's connect it. And it works right away. It even says here on the display, I don't know if you can see it because the lightning on the original Game Boy Advance is so horrible. But it's so responsive. So there is no problem in the trigger or anything. It works just right away. You just plug it in and you can use your original um, Game Boy Advance as the gamepad to play Metroid Fusion or any other Game Boy Advance games. So this is a nice cord, I highly recommend it. The GameCube was very versatile and an awesome underrated console. It had some weird, weird uh, designer choices like um, 
the disk format was weird those mini disks and of course it doesn't have uh, it does have um, component cable but the component cable is so damn expensive see how awesome the wall jump flows over there it's damn expensive and um, the best way to connect the GameCube on your HD monitor is still using a SCART adapter SCART to HDMI adapter so yeah guys that was about it um, I hope um, you enjoyed this video as much as I did and uh, I could demonstrate the, the power or how powerful uh, this adapter the 3 to 1 converter is over here this is how it looks um, highly recommended if you are a fan of the PlayStation 2 gamepad like I am this will allow you to play uh, on your Xbox, on your Nintendo 64, on your GameCube, on your v, uh, Wii 001 model just fine with only that one trigger delay over here but aside from that it's very playable um, thank you guys very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned because in my next video I will unbox the Ligavo um, HDMI Wii to HDMI converter and I will show you some crystal clear footage of uh, GameCube games played in 1080p, 720p on my monitor. So yeah guys, thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye bye.